Welcome back everyone. This lecture we're calling additional matplotlib commands and you'll notice the actual notebook that goes with this lecture is posted after the exercises and in fact it even says there's no video for this lecture. So the reason there's kind of no video for this particular notebook is that matplotlib in reality is a huge library much more than what we just showed you. So we've added this notebook with some additional concepts that you may want to explore on your own. However, we won't actually use these concepts in the course. There's a few of them for harder bonus questions in the matplotlib exercises, but as far as the rest of the course is concerned with machine learning, we don't actually need to be able to do such advanced and sophisticated plots. So I also want to give you an important note is that almost any matplotlib question you can think of already has an answer in Stack Overflow or an example in the matplotlib gallery. And you should leverage these many examples to your advantage and don't waste energy and time into memorizing really esoteric matplotlib commands. I am constantly Google searching everything that has to do with matplotlib plotting because the answers are so easily found with a quick Google search or a Stack Overflow post. So let me just bring in the actual notebook and do a very quick overview. We're not gonna code any of this out, but I do wanna show you that there is an advanced matplotlib commands lecture. I say there's no video since we're not actually going to program any of this, but there are discussions on things like setting a logarithmic scale. So here's a normal scale, but if you have really large numbers, you can set Y scale to log to see that change. You can also actually customize the placement of ticks and add custom tick labels, especially with time series this is important, but you can even see here that with these dollar signs, it's able to take in LaTeX code. So actually it has Greek letters, alpha, beta, and gamma, et cetera. Not something we really need to worry about, but it is available to you. There is scientific notation. Notice we can say one times 10 to the power of two for really large numbers here. That's available to you as well. And then there's more complex access number and access label spacing that is available to you here. And then you can also adjust those position arguments. Then there's the access grid. So we can actually add in grids to the background for readability. And then you can also change axis spines. So you can grab one of these spines, like the bottom, top, or left spine, change the colors, set the line widths, and so on. And then you can even use twin axes. So you can have two lines, but two separate Y axes, one for each line. Here we're showing area versus volume. And then you can also show axes where X and Y is zero. So kind of something that goes beyond to negative, for X, Y, essentially centering it there. And there's other 2D plot styles, scatter plots, step, bar plots, fill between. For some of these statistical plots, we're actually gonna learn how to do this with Seaborn. And there's also text annotation. So just random text can actually go anywhere inside of a plot. And then we show some more complicated examples with subplots, including uh, not evenly spaced plot grids like this. They're all available with grid spec. Okay, so there's a ton of information here as well as kind of more customized plots and more advanced stuff. But for a lot of this, especially things like 3D plots, we're either just going to copy and paste from a Stack Overflow post, or what we're gonna do is just check out the gallery. So I highly recommend that you always check out this gallery. There's so many examples here that it's pretty likely something you're thinking of already has a full example where you can just click on something like this and then see the relevant code on how to make it yourself. So I'm constantly copying and pasting myself from matplotlib gallery or from a stack overflow post. All right, so as I mentioned, we're not gonna actually code any of this out because we don't really use it throughout the course. Um, there are some hints here that may be useful, however, for the exercise questions that are coming up next. I'll see you there.